see Jakub Toth versus Ely Cassis, who is going to be the end boss for the remaining three players. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be an awesome match here. Two very good friends, teammates, battling it out. Always kind of bittersweet when you get to this moment <laughs> yeah. and one of you has to not eliminate, at least send someone to the lower division, but one of them will be going to be the end boss here. That's the main thing. So really exciting, yeah. exciting match ahead of us. And it's just such an, uh, I don't want to say like a privileged position to be in, but it's, a, it's an advantageous position because you don't have that long road to go like Marshall mentioned earlier. You can just kind of sit back and wait and see who your opponent's going to be. Yeah, size up your competition mm -hmm. a little bit. Head in the back, lounge, relax, and wait for someone to come to you. Uh, to play for that giant, beautiful trophy. <laughs> oh my god. That is the most gorgeous trophy I have ever seen. You know what I will say? I'm glad that the top four have their teammates here around, because <laughs> whoever has to hoist that trophy may need some assistance in doing so. Absolutely might just need help. Yeah, yeah. it looks very heavy. It does indeed, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that they will be more than happy to oblige, considering that, especially for these players, it's not just a one-man show. You know, yeah. there's so much work, so much behind the scenes, testing competition going on yes that you know you, you don't win a world championship alone this is in essence what's going to happen here this, this was their life for the mm -hmm. last two to three weeks you know you don't get to these positions by just you know expecting to do well winging it exactly you got to put in the effort these players did so and with this many formats you you really have to be focused to expect to be in a position like this both players kicking things off here just getting their lands down do we have blue? Yes, we have an island there for Jakob Toth. So it could go Ludovic on turn two or Tenacious Underdog as his start here. It does also have Danik, Pies Apprentice. So plenty of two drops available for Jakob. Yep, plenty of options. Jakob's hand is excellent. Now we did see Jakob being on the draw here because Ely Cassis was that number one seed. And as far as Ely's hand goes, a lot of lands, but the one nice thing that they have going on mm -hmm. for them in these standard decks is a lot of these lands, well, they still do something else. So we're not seeing like other lists where there is like three Ottawaras mm -hmm. or anything like that, but one Ottawara, one Takanuma, one Iganjo, definitely some utility if you are flooding in, yeah. some, in some scenarios. No access to the uh, creature lands anymore as those rotated out. Imagine what this deck would have looked like with those in tow. <laughs> Even better, Esper. I can't even fathom. Uh, These decks are already so, so yeah. very strong. Wedding announcement down here. Danik Pies Apprentice got in for two points of damage. Padding the life total there of Jakob just a little bit. And the 1-1 one, one down on the battlefield now. Shieldred the Apocalypse could hit the battlefield here. It's not going to get countered, but we do see that Infernal Grasp in hand there for Jakob, so we'll be able to kill that Shieldred before the trigger goes on the stack. Yeah, and that's so important. Maybe not at this very early stage of the game when you're at 21, mm -hmm. not as big of a deal, but every single life point counts in these matchups because, yeah. well, you're playing the exact same cards, so, you know, these games are won by inches instead of miles. Yeah. Oh, and especially with the pain lands, just kind of, you know, <laughs> ding -a ding -a ding -a ding -a ding dinging away at you there. Yeah, we've been seeing that all weekend, really, you know? I mean, that yeah. was kind of the difference of the success of some of these decks versus some of these maybe other mono blue or blue red standard decks that we saw yeah. earlier in on day one of this competition. Here we're going to see Shieldred infernally grasped two life lost, courtesy of the card, but importantly, no life lost from the card draw. So Rafine's Tower, Takanuma, Abandoned Mire in hand here for Jakob Toth. Anointed Peacekeeper. This is a card that I know a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, it's it's the new Elite Spellbinder. Yeah. Doesn't happen, doesn't see play all that often. Yeah, not a ton. It is a pretty strong card. You know, we were actually kind of seeing it played in Explorer a decent amount as uh, as well, yeah. naming Witches Oven, making that kind of thing a little <laughs> bit tougher. Um, but yeah, hasn't truly made its dominant stand here in Standard because these Anointed Peacekeepers are, you know, they're they're uh, competing with Rafine, Wedding yeah. Announcement, oh, Fable yeah, of the yeah. Mirror Breaker, some of these really, really strong cards. It's such a saturated spot at the moment, so, you know, Three drops, yeah. Yeah, what are you, what are you mm -hmm. cutting for that? Are you diluting the power of your deck in that case? So. It's not Rafine or Wedding Announcement, I'll tell you that, Ailey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thought here for Jakob, what he wants to follow up with. Is it going to be a Ludovic, Necrogenius, or Tenacious Underdog? Tenacious Underdog it is. Wedding Announcement will draw a card here for Jakob. And a darker waste, followed by Ao the Dawn Sky is going to hit the battlefield here. Now, this this dragon has been known to close out a couple games. Absolutely. Ao being really, really, really strong 
in this deck, especially up against Wandering Emperor. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to not have to turn sideways so it doesn't get put into harm's way that way. And most of the time in these mirror matches, what you're going to have to do is use a removal spell like Infernal Grasp. Yeah. Or if you're lucky, um, use An Ottawaro spell, something. something. Yeah, but there's not even that mm. many exile spells outside of a tapped creature. So AO is just going to get value most of the time, and you got to kind of fight through two spells built into one. Uh, so a really strong five drop. Yeah. Now I'm tapping carefully here. Looks to be deploying... What's he got there? Looks to be deploying the Anointed Peacekeeper. He's going to get to take a look at the hand here of Ely and name a card. What do you name? Probably just Tenacious Underdog since it's the card in hand. But, you know, there's definitely some thought to just picking one of the more powerful cards like the Wandering Emperor. But more than likely, you just see the card in hand, you name it if there is only one option. Yeah. Doing what these Esper colors love to do best, taxing people. I bet you he's part of the Orzov. <laughs> I think so. For sure. I think so. Mm, yeah. I keep the peace. I also tax you. Give me your money. <laughs> yeah, Jakob being a big fan of wedding announcement, both on the battlefield and off. Yeah, congratulations, we, Jakob. Exactly. We got to meet uh, him and his fiance and learn about their proposal <laughs> earlier on the trip. So really awesome stuff. Huge congrats to Jakob. Their wedding announcement didn't come with cards or, or tokens, though. So Yeah, yeah. See if it's magic theme. That'll oh, still be yeah. uh, to be continued. We'll have to see if we can correct that, perhaps. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wedding announcement is a uh, flip now into an anthem. So this is a pretty large board indeed for Jakob Toth, but Eli does have the flying advantage here. The 6-5 flyer is not anything to be sniffed at as that's going to start chipping away or more like yep. devouring the life total here. Yeah, of Jakob. huge chunks, three turn clock here and really all advantage going to Eli here. You have a Ganjo to be able to do something, but with that anthem putting it up yeah. to five power, out of reach, so now Jakob is really pressured to either find some way to start being able to connect with Denik to mm -hmm. be able to start gaining some life to kind of negate all the damage that AO is doing, or yeah. you just have to find something like Wandering Emperor doesn't really do much, Ottawara to be able to bounce it. There's not a ton of ways to actually deal with it in game one. One Void Rend, a couple Destroy Evils, and that still is going to come with the ability, most of the time, of looking at the top seven, putting a four drop or less into play <laughs> instead of putting the counters on, even though that is how yeah. we saw Jakob just beat Carl a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's great to have the versatility there of Ayo's death trigger, wedding announcement number two now for Jakob Toth. So let's we'll just get the creature if we see an attack. Yeah, and all the attacks here just look pretty bad. You have to really just give away a creature. Mm. But the one thing that Jakob was considering for an attack was to just draw a card off wedding announcement. That's yeah. the kind of desperation when you have to think about that, uh, which ends up being not ideal. Yeah. I mean, at what point does he <laughs> send uh, Denik to the graveyard just to bring him back? Yeah, as a, as a flying blocker, yeah. you know? And I mean... If that other wedding announcement flips into an anthem, mm -hmm. the flip side of Denik will actually trade with AO. So that might yeah. be the plan at some point here. Yeah, Denik Pious Apparition can come back from the graveyard with a disturbability. Yep, and Denik doing a, a lot of nice things in this matchup, but we just saw Takanuma still bringing back a creature because it is choosing one, not targeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so still able to do that. Oh, Shieldred's back. Here comes the Apocalypse, and this time, no upkeep destruction of this creature. So yeah. Jakob's going to start taking extra damage here now, and these two heavy hitters are going to get this game over and done with very fast, yeah. unless we can find something like an AO of his own. Real big draw step there to just keep Jakob just playing magic at mm -hmm. this point. With those two destroy evils in hand, though, it is still looking very advantageous for yes. Ely, but at least AO gives Jakob a chance yeah. here. And if you are able to play AO, that's still only two legends. So, oh, so Ganjo would be active mm -hmm. if Ely decides to go to combat for some reason before um, destroy eviling AO. So mm -hmm. we shall see. I mean, would it be out of the realm of possibility to see the counters put on the creatures if Jacob's AO dies? 
Um, yes, I think so, because that would still be six damage coming into Jakob, mm. and then the life loss from Shieldred would still take it down. So I think you have to, like, find Wandering Emperor, and it might be to, like, exile your own tapped creature. I mean, these are the kind of creative lines <laughs> that we have to think about. Jakob is really just saying, I need you to not have a removal spell. Turns out Eli has Three. all of the removal spells. Yeah, it's like, which one would you like to utilize here, Mr. Cassis? It's going to be Infernal Grasp. That will take care of the Dawn Sky on the other side of the battlefield. And uh, Jakob not too concerned right now, but maybe, maybe a little bit... Um, has it, or maybe a little bit regretful that he didn't send Denik in just to pad the life total a little bit. Exactly. Maybe give Jakob a little bit more time. I mean, that's up mm. to 10. It's still just going to die. Um, but yeah, I think uh, as it stands right now, this is just GG. Yeah. Take six, draw a card, end the game right here. That's going to be it. The Shieldred, the Apocalypse. Trigger <laughs> on upkeep or on the draw is going to kill him, unfortunately, unless there's oh. no tap creature. <laughs> oh, man. Ely oh. just yawning it off there. Did you yeah. see that? No big deal. I just one game one, yeah. you know, so oh, calm, so, so chill. chill. Oh, man. Imagine if something was tapped. Oh, that would have been the ideal situation there yeah. for Yaka. But let's go to game number two here. Now, both of these players, I'm pretty sure they get a sideboard similarly, right? They would have tested against each other. Yeah. Assuming that they would be in a position like this. So a lot of things that happen in these matchups, especially when you have teammates against each other, mm -hmm. number one, they usually play different play versus draw. You yeah. know, sometimes wedding announcement a little bit worse on the draw. You consider taking out one, two, maybe maybe all of them. We've seen some players do. Leaving in more removal on the draw so you can kind of break serve, as we like to call mm -hmm. it. You know, deal with a Rafine the turn it gets cast. But also with that, there's the next level aspect where Ely knows, Jakob knows how he's going to sideboard. Mm -hmm. Jakob knows how Ely's going to sideboard. Do you mix it up now to to try to do something different that the other player is not expecting? Or do you just keep it the same way because that is the best way to sideboard in these mirror matches? Well, I have to see here if uh, Jakob's able to get one up here against Ely Cassis, our first seed, the first man into Sunday. And yep. looking to be the first player into the grand finals and looking to get his first world championship trophy which is really the only accomplishment Ely hasn't had so far yeah. he's really kind of done it all you know <laughs> I mean of course uh, he still has the drive to keep competing at the highest level but I know this means a lot to not only him but Jakob as well oh, for sure you know just getting to hang out with the players and hearing about their magic journeys like this is just I don't want to say the be all and end all for them, but yeah. you know, this is such a big part of their lives. And, you know, we saw the emotion yesterday from the players who just didn't make the top four. Yeah. Like, it means so much than you think. Yeah. It's not, exactly. it's not just a card game, it's not just a pastime or, you know, a fun hobby. Like, this is a way of life for some people. Exactly. I mean, j just me and you mm. getting to talk to the players, this has meant so much to us. Yeah. And it's just elevated so much more to the players that are, you know, being involved in this kind of scenario yeah. here. And, you know, you're going to see emotion this weekend. I mean, you're going to see people get <laughs> choked up about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I absolutely love that because, yeah, you know, there's only so many people who get to call themselves world champion. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've, we've heard this said by previous Magic World champions before that you can just say, yeah, I want a pro tour to someone who doesn't play Magic, and they're like, oh, th that's cool. Yeah. But when you say what you're the, the world champion yeah. of something, people take notice. Yeah. Newspapers start contacting you at your local area and yeah. everything. Life changes. We heard that from Utah mm -hmm. after uh, uh, he oh, won from last Palo year. as well. Exactly. Basically all, uh, all of the <laughs> world champions, yeah. <laughs> As things stand now, we've got Tenacious Underdog on the battlefield with a wedding announcement ticking for Ely Cassis in the bottom half of your screen. If you're just joining us, everybody, you are watching the upper finals. One of these individuals will be the end boss for the three other players in the top four. So plenty of magic still to happen here. The upper finals, then we'll drop down to the lowers and sort all that out, and then we'll crown a world champion. Absolutely. Plenty of magic left to play here. We see Tenacious Underdog getting pretty aggressive here with against Ely. Ely doesn't have the best play. In fact, nothing lined up for next turn. So Ely is going to have a lot of pressure mm. to draw something of meaning next turn to be able to do something besides just Infernal Grasp. While Jakob, on the other hand, hand is great. So now, yeah. right now, Jakob has the decision. 
while Ely is tapped out, could just go tenacious underdog Denik, say, I got this much pressure, you know, bring mm. it on. There are some wrath effects in the sideboard, depopulate yeah. and stuff, but <laughs> normally these players are not bringing that in. So, you know, but that could be the kind of pivot that the players are doing against each other, and this could be kind of leaning into it. I love this play. Get aggressive yeah. and then start holding Ooh, up your things. Huge draw. Oh, that is an excellent Huge draw here for Ely Cassis. We could even see it fired off now to avoid a disdainful stroke from Jakob Toth. So smart. And that is an excellent way to deal permanently with Tenacious Underdog. Exile, life gain, exactly what he needed. And now we're going to get that second token from Wedding Announcement, and that can at least leave Wandering Emperor alive yeah. if Ely so chooses to just block both of them. Mm -hmm. Now, Wandering Emperor, when it is down to one loyalty, it's not the biggest deal to keep alive anyway, so I would imagine we probably either just let this go or double block the Tenacious Underdog. Oh. Never mind. We're I will uh, I'll take that back. <laughs> I mean, think about it from Ely's perspective, right? The next creature down is either a Rafine now or this Ao the Dawn Sky. Yeah. So we can start getting counters on that first strike swinging in and, you know, just play the race game again against Yakutov. Yeah, absolutely. And another big draw step here from Ely. There's that disdainful strokes on the board. So now Ely gets to make the judgment call. Do I go for AO and just hope that there is mm -hmm. no make disappear, no disdainful stroke, something like that? Or do you have this beautiful curve of being able to play Rafine and have Infernal Grasp yeah. open, which looks much more appealing in the face of a possible removal spell? That is what we're going for here. Rafine scheming Seer on the battlefield. Does Jakob take the opportunity to flash in the Wandering Emperor? I don't think we're going to see that right now. And we're going to see the Wandering Emperor on the other side of the battlefield. Ely is going to plus one, put a counter on it, and start trying to take over the game with the card advantage that Rafine offers. Now it'll be interesting if Jakob wants to play conservatively and not lean into a possible counter spell, which Ely's kind of representing. Yeah. I think I agree you just got to jam here, especially with drawing Takanuma. Yeah. Jakob is just able to, if Wandering Emperor gets countered, still bring it back later um, over the course of a couple turns For after sure. you channel it. So wedding announcement. Going to be flipping here into wedding festivity, the anthem effect. Deciding if we want to maybe put some counters on mm -hmm. Tenacious Underdog, and then when you untap another counter on Tenacious Underdog to attack through Rafine, I think yeah. it's the consideration. Oh. This is the, or the, just more tokens. Yeah, it's tough though because if you do target something with a counter Infernal Grasp, you know, it's just going to take Looking care juicy. of that. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> you want that one to get bigger? No, yeah, thank you. So. Yeah. Usually you don't want to be doing that in these Esper mid-range matchups, mm. kind of putting all your eggs in one basket. So a nice heads-up play there from Jakob. Yeah, just getting more creatures on this board and, uh, you know, try and force through to kill the Wandering yeah. Emperor because, you know, Planeswalkers left unchecked. Not all of them are going to win a game for you on the spot or by yeah. themselves, but this one... There's a lot of value in it. Absolutely. And land number five here, not exactly what Jakob was looking for, but it's not the worst because we do have one legend on the battlefield as far as uh, Denik goes. So you're able to channel Takanuma, get something back, and have Disdainful Stroke open. But as it stands right now, the best creature on the battlefield is this 3-6 uh, Rafine. Mm -hmm. And and Ely has a little bit of a better hand, although the Disdainful Stroke does line up quite well against only being able to play yeah. AO. I mean, yeah, Disdainful Stroke, sure, can deal with a big old Dawn Sky Dragon, but uh, <laughs> there is a Sphinx on the battlefield here. Rafine Scheming Seer is just going to run away with this game. We've seen it many times. If you can't answer it, you know, you leave it one turn, you're maybe okay. You leave it two or three, kiss your chances of winning this game goodbye. Exactly. And we are seeing an aggressive attack nice. here from Yakov. Get him I in like there. It. But this Infernal Grasp is able to make this block not be that great. So I think Ely is going to end up being pretty happy about this scenario. Yeah. Especially if Denik were to die here. Mm -hmm. Then Takanuma would kind of have to be fired off now. But it looks like Ely is prioritizing not killing Denik so that the flip side of Denik doesn't come down and start generating a ton of value. Mm, he's going to kill it here. So Infernal Grasp takes care of the Denik Pious Apprentice. And he can just cast it then from the graveyard. It comes back as a flyer, and that is just one way, I suppose, to jump in the way of this Rafine. Yeah, it comes back as a nice 3-2 flyer, and then whenever 
one or more creatures is put into the graveyard from mm -hmm. anywhere being the key word. So yeah. it works really well up against Rafine. Oh, yeah. So if you want to discard creatures from Ely's side, you have to kind of consider if it's worth it at this point. Yeah. And now Jakob's in a rough spot where if you don't bring back Denik, then... Your, plan your Planeswalker dies. Exactly. Your Planeswalker is going to die. It's probably going to die anyways. Mm. But also, now at this point, Takanuma is... You can still channel it, but it's going to cost all four mana, and you wouldn't have Disdainful Stroke open. So yeah. there's no way to be super mana efficient from Jakob. So. No, it's a little unfortunate, but uh, we're just going to see Denik returned. Shields are down now for Jakob, and this could Shields be the opportunity. Shields are down for AO. Oh. That is going to be oh, yeah. huge right now. AO is going to hit the battlefield shortly hereafter, but let's do some looting first. Rafine Scheming Seer finds another copy of Wandering Emperor. We'll be very happy with that indeed. Doesn't have to be so precious about the one on the board now. And uh, Danik is not going to jump in the way. He's just like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, a big head shake there from Jakob, realizing like whenever you have Disdainful Stroke <laughs> in your hand and an AO just hits the battlefield, you're kind of seeing the darkness before the dawn a little bit here. <laughs> the dawn sky, you mean. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Infernal Grasp drawn off the top here, so a way to answer one of these flying threats. Which is important. Oh, I mean, I'm I'm still wanting to kill this Rafine. I don't like yep. that it's hanging around this much, because Aeo dies, you get more value, and one way or another. And you're forced to do whatever you're going to do now, because I want to bring yeah. some attention to the lands. Plaza is extremely strong right now at just preventing any of your flyers from dying. Yeah. When it's during your turn, the Plaza of Heroes giving it hexproof uh, and indestructible. Yeah. There so the Dawn go. Sky is going to be dealt with. Let's take a look. Oh, Shieldred, Urtai as well. Oh my goodness me. Urtai is such a cool card. Either Urtai. countering something or killing something. Agreed. Oh. And then Shieldred, you know, maybe isn't as cool, flavorful, yeah. but it's sure powerful, and it is going to be game-breaking oh, yeah. right here. Please don't break the game. <laughs> it's No breaking. <laughs> it's looking like it's uh, about to be broken here for Jakob. Huge <laughs> advantage to Ely, having two of the best creatures plus the best card in hand. Yeah. Everything coming up Ely can see so far. It sure is. Disdainful Stroke, Underdog, Takanuma, Abandoned Meyer, available for Jakob with the discount, courtesy of Denik Pius Apparition. But he's going to have to start digging for answers here. He also has that clue token, so can go looking for that. Life gain is going to start ticking away, and you can see on Jakob's face just how much this is going to start slopping away. You talk yeah. about things that, if they left unchecked, are going to win the game. You're looking at two of them right now. Rafine, Scheming Seer as well as Shield of the Apocalypse. Yeah, and Rafine really, really starts to snowball and get out of hand pretty quickly. Whenever you get to attack with t even two creatures, that double loot effect yeah. ends up being very, very strong. But whenever you're getting to uh. three here, whenever you're drawing that many cards with Shieldred on the battlefield as well, uh. <laughs> it just dominates the race scenario where you're just gaining six life now, eight life mm -hmm. a turn. Glug, glug, glug. <laughs> Let's go back up to, what's it, 21? Three cards drawn, six life. So this is going to be, you know, the one good thing here for Jakob is this is going to be a clue with uh, Denik mm -hmm. going to the graveyard, uh, a little bit more value, but with clues comes a little bit more damage yeah. to Jakob's life as well. So there's not an infinite amount of clues that can be cracked. It's as much as your life total allows. Yeah, he desperately needs to find a way to deal with Shield of the Apocalypse. And Ravine Scheming Seer, Disdainful Stroke isn't going to help him right now because there's no other targets for it. So this is a big, big problem for Jakob Toth. So it looks like Ely prioritized leaving an untapped six land here to be able to presumably go Ludwig into the flip side of Denik and just say, hey, I got all these creatures. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. And you mentioned these board wipes. I didn't see if Jakob bought any of them in, but you know, could you imagine a farewell if that's what Ely goes for? Do you think he'll overextend? I think so, because I think they're very, I guess not. But, <laughs> oh, okay, so we do have Plaza left open. Plaza's so that is open. a great way to not overextend. Now, it, there has to be one of those removal spells like farewell, like depopulate, yep. but still having the Plaza of Hopes. I think this is all she wrote for I, this map. I'm, well, I'm right with you there, friend. That's going to be it. So Jakob's going to scoop him on up to Ely Cassis.
a dominant 2-0 there once again just absolutely crushing it this weekend yes. cool calm collected you know sometimes maybe even looking a little bored <laughs> yeah, I know, I <laughs> he's know. just like so chill <laughs> <laughs> he really is he has been in these situations plenty of times before he knows every match is just well yeah. another match of magic yeah he never gets too emotional yeah he never gets too stressed out and i think that's what has really been the amazing part of his game lately is he's always cool calm and